uh, this video is going to give a overview of and a little bit of an example of how do we uh, calculate second order multipliers for a, a single column. So what we have is this 460 uh, by 82 UB. Um, you can see that it's a it's a sway system. Uh, it's got some uh, you know compression load of 125 kilonewtons, and then it has this lateral force which generates a, a bending moment. Uh, distribution um, of 300 kilonewtons and uh, 350. Um, what we have also is that you know we've got a, an LX uh, is uh, 12 meters and a LY is six, um, and so that's just going to be uh, you know what our our distance is there. And so uh, first thing we need to do is. Um, go ahead and determine oh sorry that's a sorry I made a mistake actually that shouldn't be 12 that should be 6 um, uh, so sorry they're they're both about both axes uh, we've got a 6 meter uh, distance so uh, there we go so 6 meters um, very good. So as we go through, the first thing we need to do is determine if we even need to um, apply our uh, second order multipliers by looking at our lambda c. Uh, so lambda c equals lambda mb equals the uh, nominal buckling capacity over n star. Uh, and then we'll just keep a, a reference column uh, here on the side. Uh, this is just coming out of NZS 3404 in section uh, 4.9.2.3.2. Um, so what does all of this uh, equal? Well, uh, first thing, so N star, we know that's going to be 125. Um, but we need to determine what this uh, nominal buckling uh, load is. And again, our buckling load can be different um, about two different axes because we've got two different moments of inertia. So let's look at our uh, first nominal buckling load uh, about the x axis. So we'll use this I sub x. Uh, that's going to equal pi squared times E times I sub X times KE times L. Um, and then, of course, our nominal buckling capacity is just coming from 4.8 dot 2. Um, and so, well, let's uh, expand this out. We have um, pi squared times... Uh, e is um, going to be 200,000. Um, our IX is going to be uh, just up here, uh, 372 times 10 to the 6th, and that's uh, millimeters to the 4th over, uh, we know that our length is going to be uh, 6,000. And our Ke factor. So, uh, in order to find that, uh, we actually need to just uh, go to our uh, standard here, and um, we'll just go through. So, at uh, you know page 4.8, if we look, um, we have a sway system like this where we're uh, fixed at both ends, but we can still sway. So we see we have a Ke factor equal to 1.2. So we'll write that in. So that's going to be 1.2. Um, and sorry, that whole thing is squared on the bottom. So if we do that, we work out that our uh, uh, nominal uh, buckling load uh, for the column about the x-axis is going to be 14,200 kilonewtons. Well, because we have a, a different I sub Y, that we need to figure out what our nominal buckling load is going to be uh, about the Y axis. So, you know, MB, sorry, X, 
y uh, equals pi squared times e times i sub y over k e l squared. Um, and that's just going to equal pi times 200,000 times 18.6 times 10 to the sixth. So that should be a pi squared over, uh, again, we have the, the, the same conditions here. So we have the same Ke of 1.2 uh, times 6,000, that whole fact squared. So we have N-O-M-B-Y equals 708 kilonewtons. Well, now if we plug this back into our lambda C, um, you know, whichever the, uh, the minimum of this lambda MB, uh, this ratio, uh, is going to be the one that governs. I mean, it's pretty clear uh, N star hasn't changed uh, with the two directions, and so it's going to be this smaller NMY, uh, the nominal buckling about the y-axis, uh, which is uh, going to end up governing our uh, design, and hence this is what we're going to use uh, for our lambda C. So that's governs. So, um, in determining our lambda c, uh, what we need to do is look at what these values are. So, these values are going to be, so, you know, if we determine lambda c equal lambda mb equals uh, 708 kilonewtons. Uh, divided by n star, which is 125. And we get a lambda c equal to 5.66, uh, which is greater than 5. So uh, that means that uh, we can uh, amplify first order moments. Um, if lambda c was less than 5, we'd have to do a specific second order analysis. And if lambda c was greater than or equal to 10, uh, you know, we would be, our um, demand would be so much lower than what our critical buckling load would be that we could ignore um, the uh, the second order effects completely, but because we're in that sweet spot between five and ten for a sway system, um, then we will uh, we'll have to sort of amplify what our first order moments are here, this three fifty and three hundred, um, by our amplification factor. So, in doing that, um, because it's a sway system, we need to look at both. Uh, you need to find. both delta B and delta S for sway systems. And so uh, let's go ahead and do that. So um, delta S is just simply going to equal um, 0 0.95 over 1 minus 1 divided by lambda c. And uh, that's just coming again. We'll get our reference column going over here. Uh, that's coming from NZS 3404 in section 4.4.3. Dot three dot two. Um, so this one's quite easy to see. You know, we we've already determined our our lambda c, so we have um, everything that we need. So this is just going to equal zero point 
nine five over one minus one divided by five point six six um, and then that'll give us a delta s equal to one point one five all right, because it's a sway system, we need to look at both. So delta B um, is going to equal CM over 1 minus 1 over lambda C. And uh, again, this is coming from 4.4.3.2.1. So CM equals this 0 0.6 minus 0 0.4 uh, times this factor uh, beta M. And beta M, uh, if you recall, is just uh, dependent upon what uh, the moment distribution is uh, over the member. So, um, where uh, beta m is equals m1 over m2, uh, where m1 is the uh, the smaller of the two. So for our case, our smaller moment is uh, 300 kilonewton meters. So that equals uh, 300 kilonewton meters uh, divided by m2. Uh, the larger of the two, which is 350. And um, if uh, we are in reverse curvature, um, sorry, if we're in reverse curvature, then beta m is positive. So that's what we have here. So we're positive because we're reverse curvature. Um, so that will give us a um, beta m equal to 0 0.86. So if we plug that back into CM equals 0 0.6 minus 0 0.4 times 0 0.86. Uh, we get CM equals 0 0.377. So delta B equals 0 0.377 over 1 minus 1 over 5.66. So we can see even just here um, by uh, inspection that you know the denominator is the same in both of these. Uh, the numerator 0.95 versus 0.37. Um, this one is what's going to govern. So um, our amplification factor is going to be delta S equals delta M equals 1.1. So what we would do is we would take this 1.15 and we would multiply it by our first order moments, scale those up, and that will account for uh, this additional moment demand coming from our second order uh, sway. So um, I hope that you, uh, you found that useful, and thanks for watching.